All right, folks, today we're taking a look at Flandre Scarlet from Alter. I gotta say, this figure's existence is just surprising to me. I never would have guessed that Alter of all companies would start making Toho figures, but here we are. You know, one of the first figures I ever owned was of Flandre. It was one of the first 10 figures I ever bought alongside her sister, Romelia. Griffin Enterprises wasn't really a great company, but if there's one thing I could praise them for, it was how willing they were to make so many characters into figures from Toho. You really don't get that anymore, but I actually sold that figure when this one went up for pre-order. I put all my faith in Alter to make the definitive version of Flandre. And now it's time to find out if they actually delivered. Now when it comes to the assembly of Flandre, I actually don't think it was too bad at all. Like, yeah, her wings are a little annoying, but all figures with wings are kind of annoying to some degree, so maybe I'm just getting used to it. I did feel pretty dumb not realizing one of the crystals needs to be attached separately, but I didn't even notice something was missing until I looked back into the blister. She fit into the base just fine, the stained glass went in surprisingly smooth too. The only tedious part of Flandre I found is if you want to use the second set of arms, you need to remove the wings and then put them in. So despite her complex look, I'd say about a medium difficulty in getting her all set up. But when you do, man, is this just not the perfect looking figure? From a design standpoint, I have absolutely no complaints. They've managed to pack in so much detail into this 1 8 scale figure that it's a bit surreal to me. Also, I'm not exactly sure where this redesign is coming from, as her outfit is a bit different this time around from what I'm used to, but it manages to stay true to her character while still feeling fresh. You still get the primarily red dress with white frills that fans are accustomed to, but now there's also gold and black trim running throughout her outfit. Little orange bows decorating her dress, random keys at her waist, sure, why not? And overall, just a more complex design for the rest of it. Even her shoes get a redesign to fit the part and look great, though I do wonder why she has a random strap around her leg. It looks cool, don't get me wrong, but I just don't know its purpose. Anyway, the billowing of the dress is excellent stuff. All the creases and folds of her outfit are, and her legs dangling about here is kind of cute too since she's just floating around. I think that really plays into the mysterious nature of Flandre. It's a little hard to get a read on her, but she's either being a little cheeky or acting innocent depending on which setup you go for. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the apple as I just like its glossy finish, but both look great. Her weapon this time kind of looks like a succubus tail to me though. I kind of thought it was at first because it's so curvy, but it's not connected anywhere to her. And she's a vampire, so that wouldn't make any sense. But I mean, come on, it's designed just like one, right down to the little heart that they even added some red gradation to. Now, depending on the design of Flandre, you might get weapons and wings that are more sleek and thin and perhaps metallic, but here they're wooden and decrepit, which I think looks so much better. Calling this figure colorful would in fact be really redundant because you're essentially getting an entire rainbow with Flandre thanks to these crystals. Each one is also like a slightly different size than the last, and I just love how they're all bouncing all over the place in different directions. It looks amazing. They're also tipped in gold, which is different for sure, but the way Alter sculpted these makes them look valuable. I think it's the sense of realism they give off. They look like actual crystals this time instead of little ornaments, which helps her not look as much like a Christmas tree, though she still kind of does. Also, shout out to whoever was in charge of her head sculpt. The level of detail here is top notch, pretty much as good as it gets. Perfectly shaded hair, excellent sculpt work for her bangs and numerous strands found throughout. The shape of her ponytail this time around is super exaggerated. Her hat is adorable as always, and I think I can confidently say that these are the best eyes I've seen on a Flandre figure. The crimson color is just killer. The extra eyelashes on the bottom are a really nice touch too. Just the design of them overall are really striking and complement the cute but slightly unhinged look of her wide double fanged smile. As for the base, it's made up of about four parts or so, actually probably five. You got the glossy support on the bottom, the stone checkerboard, the bed of flowers, the thorns, and then the stained glass window. The way it's all set up kind of makes your brain think of a throne, and I don't think it's wrong to interpret it that way. She's actually just floating above the flowers, which isn't odd at all considering her abilities, but this is a phenomenal showing of craftsmanship all around. The flowers and foliage are painted just as nicely as Flandre herself, full of bold colors and heavy shading. The thorns circle the lower half of the figure in a way that makes it look like she's controlling them. They're bumpy to the touch too. You don't really get to see much of the stone of this base as a result, but the front being chipped away gives the impression of age and perhaps abandonment, which leads into the stained glass window itself, cracked in several areas yet still holding on and shining in a bright orange. It looks a lot better in person than the photos implied, which is really nice, and it gives the figure a simple but effective backdrop. It's a pretty heavy piece too, I'm not exactly sure what the trim is made of, but it might be a very thin metal. 
Oh, and it's kind of cool that if you look at this figure with the right lighting from behind, it gives her a bit of an orange glow. It's pretty neat. If it wasn't for the wings, Flandre really wouldn't even be taking up that much space at all, which is pretty impressive considering the thorns are erratically circling around the bottom of this figure, and the stained glass is leaning backwards. I would say all in all, it's a pretty space-conscious figure despite everything going on with it, which is an absolute plus these days. Oh, and by the way, this figure is extremely stable. The only movement you're gonna see when you're like walking around in your room or moving the figure, like little vibrations, right, are at the tips of the wings. Everything else is completely motionless, which is so great to see. This figure is built really well. Since she's a 1 8 scale, she's obviously on the smaller side, but as a whole, I don't think the figure feels small. With the figure looking almost like a mini diorama, there's plenty going on in like every direction, which makes her wide enough and tall enough so that you really shouldn't have a problem fitting her in with other figures in your collection, especially if you're a Toho collector. What I like about this figure is that nothing feels held back or reserved. They had a vision for Flandre and they went all the way with it. Nothing is compromised, nothing feels like it's lacking, it's 100% realized and it's brilliant. But, oh, and I hate saying this, but the quality control on this figure is not quite there. Which also does mean it is a little compromised, but it sounded good in the script, leave me alone. <laughs> it's not terrible, but I am actually a little disappointed with how many tiny little problems I found throughout her. Some of them are kind of hard for me to document though, like my base just came with a scratch on the glossy part in the back, but I just cannot take a good photo of it for some reason. And then there's tiny black spots on one of her big ribbons in the back, which you could probably see if I get up close. In a few areas of her dress, thankfully not too much at all, but in between a couple of the creases and folds is a little bit of like roughness just because they forgot to sand down the extra plastic. And when I first got this figure, I legit had to clean black smudges off of one of her legs because she was just dirty, but like, why did I have to do that on a figure that costs over $300? What's up with that? None of it's a deal breaker though, most of it I can't even see unless I'm breathing on top of the figure I'm so close to it, but I took all this footage so I know it's there and it bugs me as a result. But I don't think it'll bug you unless you get really unlucky and you get a copy that's worse than mine. Outside of some minor stuff, I really struggle to think of a figure I bought this year that's objectively nicer than this Flandre. And while I totally have my Toho bias, I certainly have more Xenoblade bias, yet I do think this Flandre figure squeaks ahead of Nia just a bit for me. It just feels more complete. It also has much better stability, and also this base just puts Nia's to shame. I mean, come on, this thing looks immaculate. So while I think Nia is going to remain my personal favorite figure of the year, this is objectively the nicest figure I've seen so far in 2023. Though, we'll see if it remains that way, because I can think of one figure that I'm buying that might overtake it, but I don't know if it's ever coming out. Just keeps getting delayed. Mm. 35,000 yen sure is a large sum of cash needed to buy this figure, and while it hasn't even been out for that long, like three weeks or so, I've actually seen it on the AmiAmi pre-owned section for about 5,000 yen less. It didn't last that long, but I know what I saw, and I didn't like it because I just bought this damn thing, but it's lucky for you guys if you want to look out for a discount. But the question remains, do I recommend this Flandre figure? I think I do. This has got to be the nicest Flandre on the market right now. And honestly, from the series as a whole, this thing is spectacular. But I don't really feel comfortable telling you guys just to spend 35,000 yen on a figure just because I like it. So think it over for a little bit. Maybe go play one of the games that she's featured in. She's usually a secret boss, but is sometimes playable depending on the game. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Next time we're here in this seat, we're either doing a long overdue unboxing haul or I'm reviewing a figure that's in like a gigantic box. Unsure which yet, but hopefully you guys enjoy either way. Until then though, I guess I'll just see you around. Later.